Peter, Chad, yeah, welcome to Talk in the Orville. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, the Mocklins are back yeah, uh, are. this season. Uh, so what does the Mocklin Bunch have in store for us in New Horizons? And what's it like for you guys working together? Man, well, I tell you what we have in store. You have a, a ton of shit that you won't be able to unsee. How about that? <laughs> like, I like not being able to unsee stuff. You won't, man. I'm telling you. Your, your mind is pure and fresh and innocent right now. Like, enjoy it while it lasts, because it's about to be over. That's about to be... <laughs> Come in and just... You're just going to mess us up, huh? Mess you all the way up. <laughs> well, uh, Chad, congrats on the Humble Hollywood Podcast, I do have to say. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, what's it like working with Peter Mank and not being able to see his face behind that mask? Or are you able to just kind of feel what, what faces he's making at you? <laughs> well, from that standpoint, no, I can't. I can't decipher those things. Uh, we talk enough ish to each other, but uh, that's my compadre. Uh, we, me and his brother, we, 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 we trained actors, studied classically, and uh, we've done work all over the countries and theaters all over the country, and and we we walked the bricks of New York like. Totally, like, how did we not know each other in New York right. uh, with the with the with the three degrees that we have and all the people we both know? Um, but when you come from that kind of ilk, it, it's there's a simpatico there. There's a language that we speak that yeah. we don't have to say anything. But there's also the language of understand how to break down a scene and how to trust your partner mm -hmm. and be to share and collaborate together. And uh, I think Peter and I do that wonderfully. And um, I just never, there, it was just never a misstep, you know? From yes. the moment we started to work together, uh, you know, we feel like, you know, we feel like we're in a rehearsal space and, yeah. and the theater and that rehearsal room where we, you know, where you give all and, and lay it down and you share with each other and you, you grow together, and uh, I think we're doing some fantastic work. We've we've got some scenes that they they gonna knock your socks off, yeah. you know, because we don't play. We we yeah. bring it. We yeah. bring it's it rough. fully. We it's not. Rough. This ain't no like yo. This is TV. We got no. no it's we many movies. It. We're yeah. not playing. I mean, yeah. yeah we, the we, two episodes I've seen are just a huge upgrade. I, I'm absolutely. not even. I'm no, gonna no. I'm gonna play uh, New Horizons strip poker. I'm just gonna wear a bunch of articles right of clothing and see right what on. the episodes blow yeah. off of me. Yeah, I mean you you kind of I see what you're working with already right there. But uh, <laughs> I do want to say I do want to say one of the one of the the great things about working with uh, another actor who who's you know we we uh, about the same age we kind of come up kind of come kind of came up with around the same time and yeah. being inspired by the same. You know the same the ilk as as Chad said, but it's like when, when you get down to business, and you get to set. It's it's like okay, how can I like let me figure out what I need. Like, well, let me figure out what kind of question to ask this actor so that I can ask a question and the answer that they get will help me inform like the choice that I'm gonna make. You know what I mean? So it's not just about like are you gonna do it this way or whatever, but it's like no, I can if, if I because I spend a lot of time. You spend a lot of time doing imagination work. You spend a lot of time. You know, not, learning not just your lines, but learning your your scene partner's lines, so you know where they're coming from, and so then you could walk onto uh, I could walk onto set, and if something is unclear or there's a moment or a beat that I'm like feel like I'm glossing over, all I need to do is figure out what question to ask Chad, you know, and then and the answer that I get is what I need to help me specify like specify. A particular moment and that's just one little beat of like a whole scene and if you're doing that you know like you're rocking together like it, it does feel like being on stage because when you're on stage it's like it you you know curtains up and like there's no cut you know there's the no show must go on no is going you know so you got to make that so that that's a joy and i feel like it i feel like it needs and i i think seth would concur with this that it the the, the that those that these characters need that kind of gravitas, you know, like that's yeah. something that people have always said. I have, oh, you have this gravitas, you have this gravitas, but like, but I feel like they would run each other. Like Mocklins will, you Mocklins have to be with Mocklins because they run each other over. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like you, uh, <laughs> you ever wonder what 
what what what what Mocklin sound like when they're making love is if you just put two giant rocks in a dryer. <laughs> <laughs> the sexual event. I have the, exactly. That'll bring you closer together. Yes. Uh, right. We, yeah. That's I just so, love that well, one. Both of your <laughs> well, both of your characters serve different purposes for me as a viewer. Uh, mm -hmm. Abortus, you know, great sci-fi like this. It really brings up uh, situations going on in our own lives, uh, you know, in, on the, in our own world. And uh, Bordis to me always seemed like, you know, when you're bringing up um, a mirror to society, Bordis mm -hmm. to me always seemed like he's that fly on the wall watching these humans do all these silly things. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. we, the viewer, get to see ourselves do all these silly things that we just right take for granted, that we think yeah. are normal. Right. Yeah, no, that's right. absolutely spot on because... Yeah. We are sort of the ambassadors, if you will, uh, to the alien side of things. Because it's a human, it's, you know, it's written by humans for humans. Um, but, and so, and even though we're trying to explore, you know, the, the life of the alien life, um, you know, there's only so much we can do. And, and, and so then the, the, the onus becomes on our shoulders to three-dimensionalize these aliens that are not um, first generation uh, English speakers or their culture is completely uh, contradictory to, you know, the planetary union seems to side on the- uh, On the, earth like the, perspective. Earth. Yeah, I mean, and mm -hmm. so, and that can, that's, that's, that's only to be helped because, you know, it's a human show, but like when you are really trying to three-dimensionally include other species, like the yeah. magnitude of that, is not lost on me, um, you know, because they what it tolerate us, they yeah. tolerate us. <laughs> but Bordis, Bordis to me is a more of a student of all of that. You know what I mean? Like he is genuinely trying to piece things together and see, like, how can this land on me? Can this serve me and right. my own mm. expansion and growth? Whereas I'm just bumping into stuff and then going, what the? <laughs> oh, no. okay. Well, and for me, I see it more. Everything is seen through more of a lens of a threat to my, you know, culture and existence to a certain degree. That's a little hyperbole, but I do believe it's in there. Like, no, for sure. I don't know that that I have a natural, as natural a curiosity as Borders does about these things. You know, uh, I want the ice cool. cream and the. Cigarette. Yeah. That that <laughs> alienates. I'm kind of at you know, home with my people and my culture. Yeah, <laughs> and Bordis is really one that's more learn, curious to taste way. things. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like yeah. that that further <laughs> isolates <laughs> and, and and alienates. You know, like I feel like these are things that like that keep Bordis up at night. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the like to like to be be alienated from your own, you know, your origins, like your own yeah. like there's like, like, there are things I vehemently disagree with. When it comes to Mocklin culture, right? Yes. And, so, and I feel like, and 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 Clyden represents like this awesome balance to that because mm -hmm. there are things that he vehemently disagrees with with human culture, and like this is who we are, and like you know, so when you're not siding per se on the agenda or the moral uh, compass of the human beings in the in the planetary union, it gets really tricky. Which I think is perfect, which I think is what it's yeah. supposed to be. You know what I mean? And if you think about it, Peter's persona appears, we're actually the opposite kind of internally. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. my persona appears to be warm and round and inviting, and Peter's is harsh, right? But yet, internally, it's the opposite. Yeah, there was a the switch. Well, to me, yeah. Biden represents that uncle that you were really dreading having a conversation with Thanksgiving dinner. He's going to tell you what it is. Yeah, yeah. You think I'm tell what it is to him. in the family? And, no, yes, no. <laughs> and he's living. It's a badge of honor, you know. His culture, his life, his experiences. That it's a it's a badge of honor for him. That you know, um, you'd be hard pressed to try to try to do some reworking with that. But mm. we will see. You know, we will in New Horizons, yes, and will. I'm getting, I'm getting yeah. the, I'm getting the light. It's time to wrap up. <laughs> but my badge of honor is talking to both of you gentlemen. So thank yeah, you we'll for keep inviting it up. me. Keep up. I, I enjoy your, I enjoy your, uh, your, your, your podcast. Oh, ain't never gonna stop.
Right on, oh, brother. Thank you, brother. All right, I got to check it out. <laughs> All sure. right, thanks, you guys. All right. All right.